请收看《维新世界》，义工利人天。Um, first of all, thank you for Wixin Shen Xiao to organizing this fantastic conference. And, uh, and for me, it's always fascinating this connection between the West and the East. And I believe that speaking about Reiki, it's exactly this, this uh, one of the techniques that is fantastically joining the, the, the Eastern uh, knowledge with the, with, the, with the Western mentality uh, as well. So Reiki, first of all, is not organization. Reiki is not religion. Reiki is technique. Technique based on, the, on uh, channeling uh, transcendental energy based on key. And uh, is uh, the effectiveness of this, of this practice depends on the effectiveness and uh, and the spiritual mastery of the person who performs. And what is very interesting, that is, I believe, like uh, here, many people, they, are, they have the, how to say, connection with the, with the religion. And, uh, and uh, most probably you know that Reiki is quite accepted in the West. That when we mention the word, and today we mentioned quite a few times, right? Uh, we, like, we, we heard about it at least. E, or most or many of us in some way we were like experienced that <clears throat> um, at the same time because it's uh, there are certain countries which uh, already reiki is a is a complementary to medicine because when you when a, a person um, gets a sick person gets the treatment medical treatment plus the energetic work uh, through Reiki uh, is, is already medically testified that, that, that the effectiveness of the healing is, is much more effective. But at the same time, there are a lot of problems because other people, they don't, uh, they don't like it. And most probably pharmacology people or formally formed medical staff, uh, they may not like it and be against it. So. Uh, Reiki, first of all, it's um, appeared in, uh, in Japan and it's connected with the word ki, which is equivalent of Chinese kui, ki, which often uh, now we use chi, and it corresponds to one of the two Chinese characters forming the word qigong. Uh, in Taoism, qi is the original substance of the universe, and in the Asian Taoist book uh, Lie Tzu, most probably I'm, I'm, I'm pronounced not correctly, is attributed to the master also called Le Tzu, who imparted his teachings around the, the year 400 BC. And we read, I quote, uh, there was a primal simplicity, there was a primal commencement, there were primal beginnings, there was a primal material. The primal simplicity preceded the appearance of the Qi. The primal commencement was the beginning of the chi. The primal beginnings were the chi beginning to assume shape. The primal material was chi when it began to assume substance." End of quote. At the level of the macrocosm, the universe, the chi guarantees the harmony of yin and yang. 
in the writings attributed to Lao Tzu himself, we find the statement that uh, 10,000 things carry yin and embrace yang. Through unification by qi, they achieve harmony. Thus, we see that it is the function of qi to unify the appearance, yin, with the reality, yang, of the 10,000 things. The end of another quote. At the level of the human microcosm, qi is the life force that is crucial for our physical and psychological well-being. The great Taoist master Cheng Tzu, who lived between the 4th and 3rd century BC, reported that, I quote, Master Le, uh, Le Tzu said to barrier keeper Yin, the perfect man can walk under the water without choking, can tread on fire without being burned, and can travel about the 10,000 things without being frightened. May I ask how he managed this? The, the barrier keeper Yin replied, that is because he guards his chi, end of quote. Practices promoting the good circulation of chi are as old as Taoism. They include breathing techniques and physical exercises, but they were never presented as separate from self-cultivation and a good moral life. And my presentation today focuses on Reiki, which is believed to be of some interest of the audience as technique originated in Eastern Asia, but today is much more well known in North Africa, in the Western world in general. In general, Western North world. Africa. Oh, I'm sorry, North America. And the, the Western world in general, more than, than in Asian countries. And this indeed a paradox that Reiki, which accordingly to scholar estimates, has around more than one million practitioners in the West and is almost unknown in Japan, the country where it originated. Justin Stein, in a recent article in the journal Japanese Religions, reported that Reiki is now slowly coming back to Japan from the United States as part of the phenomenon of so-called Japanese New Age. Conversely, an increasing number of Western Reiki practitioners visit Japan and somewhat reconnect with the early origins of Reiki and the specific places where it was first taught. However, the name Reiki still does not ring a bell among many educated <coughs> Japanese, including those with some interest in spirituality. The story of Reiki is not easy to reconstruct. It has, of course, as always, the mythical version, and there is a scholarly one. Myth are symbolic tales conveying spiritual truths. As opposite to myths, more often typical of the narratives spread by spiritual practitioners, scholarly accounts rely on archival research and documents. Practitioners may object that scholars may have their facts right, but there is something missing. Practitioners of Reiki are mostly familiar with the story of its founder, a Japanese man who died in 26, 1926, called Mikao Sui. Uh, a crucial figure to whom I will return. And, uh, and uh, the person who really talked about, about Mikao Sui was uh, a lady called Hawaii Takata. Uh, Takata never met Usui herself and was initiated into Reiki by one of Usui's disciples after Usui's da death. To introduce Reiki to Western audiences and emphasize that Yusui's technique were both inspired by and compatible with different religions, she told the story that Yusui taught in a Christian school in Japan, was ordained as a Christian minister, went to the study at the university in Chicago, and was also a student in Buddhist institu institutions of higher learnings in Kyoto. The scholarly version of Usui's life has been reconstructed by several, several academics, and particularly by the monumental doctoral dissertation of Dutch scholar Georgian Jonker, published in 2016 after years in, of research in Japan. Several Japanese archives were destroyed during the World War II, and holes remain in, in Usui's life's history. 
However, Jonker and other scholars established to the satisfaction of the scholarly community that Yusui never traveled outside Japan, does not attend, never attended the University of Chicago, was never ordained as a Christian minister and did not study in Kyoto, although he taught for a while in a Christian school in Japan, cannot be excluded. The essential truth of Takata's version beyond the mythical details is that compared to many educated Japanese of his time, Yusui had an exceptional interest and acquired an uncommon knowledge of different world religions, including Shintoism, Taoism, Christianity, and Buddhism. And he was a truly interreligious experience. Mikai Yusui was born in Tanyan, a village in Japan's Gif Jifu prefecture on August 15, uh, 1865. He was born during a civil war that opened the way uh, in 1868 to the Meiji Restoration and the modernization of Japan. The early stages of the Meiji Restoration also saw the imposition of Shinto as a state religion and the persecution of Christianity and several schools of Buddhism. However, Buddhists survived and the young Usui was educated in different schools attached to temples where Zen, Tendai, and the Jodo Shu version of Pure Land Buddhism were taught. Not much is known with certainty of Yusui early years. Uh, what is certain is that his family, which owned a beer business, went bankrupt as a consequence of Japan's economic crisis of 1880s. Yusui had to earn his living through various professions, including journalists and possibly private secretary of politician Goto Shinpei. There is some evidence that he, in his teenage years, Yusui was already exploring Shintoism, Christianity, in addition to the different Buddhist traditions and had been educated in. Yusui undertook various retreats in the area of Mount Kurama, visiting the local Zen and Tendai Buddhist monasteries and spending time meditating. Uh, something very important happened to Usui in 1922. Um, after 21 days of meditation of Mount Kurama, he had an experience described in early Japanese sources with the words kamigari, I'm sorry, kamigakari, which means being possessed by kami or divine spirit or Chingon Kishin, meaning achieving unity with the divine, both indicating an enlightenment or satori that comes directly from the spiritual world. It seems that almost immediately after his experience of 1922, Usui started teaching a new technique called Usui Reiki and founded an organization called Usui Reiki Ryoho Gakai, uh, which can be translated as Usui Society of Reiki Technique. Most of his first disciples were officers of Japanese Imperial Navy. In 1923, the Great Kanto earthquake hit Japan, and Tokyo in particular, killing more than 130,000 people. Usui mobilized his disciples to go to Tokyo and help the suffering people through Reiki. The organizational effort was certainly facilitated by Usui's relationship with the Imperial Navy, to which all the first disciples holding leadership positions in his organization belonged. This made him and his system comparatively known and popular in Japan. From 1919, the Japanese government cracked down on new religious movement fearful that some of their leaders may rebel against the authorities and even usurp the authority of the emperor, an accusation directed against Oomoto and his flamboyant leader Onisaburo Dekushi, who was arrested in 1921. Although some members of Oomoto practiced Reiki with Usui, the later emphasized that the system both was not a religion and had no implications with politics. In an interview he gave in 1925, Usui called Reiki a technique, Ryoho, a word which was also part of the name of his organization. He also emphasized in the interview that Reiki was not a form of medicine, although it can assist in healing. By 1925, in fact, a movement supporting Western medicine 
and attacking traditional healing techniques as a way of practicing medicine without a license had gained the support of Japanese government. Not only new religious movements, but also groups offering healing and not led by licensed medical doctors were suppressed. In an, in, in an interview, Yusui said, I quote, our Reiki technique is an original therapy method using, using the power based on Reiki, which is a universal power in the universe, end of quote. He also claimed that he had taught Reiki to some thousand dis disciples. Later, the word therapy was no longer used by Yusui's organization to underline that Reiki was not a part of medicine. Although not a religion, Usui's technique did refer to spiritual concepts. In the few techniques consigned in written form by his disciples before his death in 26, Usui claimed that, I quote, everything in the universe possesses Reiki without any exception. We humans hold inside us the great Reiki that fills the great universe. Humans are a microcosm that takes the great spirit from micro, micro, microcosm, takes the great spirit from macrocosm. Everyone holds a part of this great Reiki in his body. End of quote. As I already mentioned, you see, he died of, the stro of a stroke during a trip in Fukuyama on March 9, 1926. He had instructed his di di disciples that he wanted to be buried family in the Seiju Temple in Tokyo. Although he had expo explored many, many religions, the instructions he gave for his burial seemed to reaffirm his connection with his family Buddhist tradition. The naval officers who continued to Usui's Gakkai after his death did not intend to make it to a large organization. They admitted new members only after, fee, after years of severe training. At the death of Yusuis, there were a few thousands, but after the Great Depression, that also affected Japan in 1929, they went down to a few hundreds, and the Gake remains today a very small and elitist uh, organization most Japanese are not familiar with. Paradoxically, however, many Japanese may have been influenced by Yusui's teaching without knowing it, as founders and leaders of new religions and new forms of martial arts had learned Reiki from Usui and his immediate disciples. This is attested by Mokishi Okada, the founder of the larger, of large new religious movements, Sekai Kyuose Kyo, and Momorihei Ueshiba who created a new and extremely successful martial art that most of us we know called Aikido. For reasons of their own, they preferred not to mention their early relation with Reiki, but those familiar with Tosui teachings may recognize their influence in Okada and Washiba's theories and practices. You should get trained in the last year of his life, a naval medical officer called Juhiro Hayashi, whom he made a member of board of the Gakkai. And like his colleagues on that board, Hayashi believed that Reiki was a great gift to be taught to the whole world, which led him to, give, to leave the Gakkai in 1931. He established what he called Hayashi Reiki Research Center, but in fact believed that Reiki did not need any organization to be transmitted. What was important was the personal relationship between a master and his disciples. In 1935, the most important event in the history of Reiki happened when an American Japanese lady, that I already mentioned, from Hawaii, called Hawaii Takata, traveled to Japan for medical treatment. She was also introduced to Hayashi and greatly benefited uh, from Reiki. She invited Hayashi to visit Hawaii and teach pupil there for five months between late 1937 and early 38. According to Tanaka's version of his biography, Hayashi died in 1940 as a self-induced stroke voluntarily ending his early life. Contemporary Japanese documents, however, mention a ritual suicide 
which was comparatively common among those who, as Hayashi did, disagreed with the militaristic politics, politics led to Japan's ill-fated involvement in the World War II. In a book published in, nine, in 2023 by University of Hawaii Press, Justin Stein has reconstructed in what may well be definitive way the life of Takata and how she was the person mostly responsible for the planetary success of Reiki and for making it what it is today. It is a system which a myriad of different schools and masters of all ethnicities and religious persuasions with no unified organization and no unitary doctrine or dogma. Stain, like others, emphasize, emphasizes that, it, that this is the same time Usui Reiki and something very much different from the original Usui Gakkai. The basic principle of mobilizing a universal energy to achieve physical and spiritual benefits remains the same. From a sociological point of view, the democratization, democratized Reiki taught throughout the world today open to everybody and reaching hundreds of thousands is, is not similar to the small elitistic group club of mostly Imperial Navy officers that made out of Japanese Usugakai. Stein also criticized the two main interpretations of Reiki by previous Western scholars. Some insisted that Reiki is an American form of spirituality built with Japanese material and languages that were attractive because they were exotic and many Americans believed that Asia could teach them a superior form of spirituality. Others, on the contrary, contrary interpreted Reiki as an Eastern Asian phenomenon that successfully adopted to the West, just as happened to Zen Buddhism and other techniques or movements from India or China. Stein believes that neither of these interpretations is adequate. For him, Reiki is a Pacific phenomenon and a fruit of the con uh, continuous transpacific cultural interaction in the 20th century between the West Coast of the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and Asia. Not coincidentally, Takata was from Hawaii, which had a pivotal role in those exchanges. Books by cont contemporary scholars such as John Kern Stein, who are themselves both academics and Reiki masters at the same time, also raise, que raise questions about the status and future of Reiki, of which two seems especially interesting. One is the fact, which is confirmed by the statistical surveys, that there are many more women than men among the Reiki masters internationally. Uh, the question may be, is this because women are in the majority in most, although not all spiritual movements, or because Hawaii or Takata, somewhat sp simplified version of Usui original Reiki, was also a feminist, feminized version, the question has not fully explored and deserves further research. Another delicate question these books mention in the relationship between Reiki and money. The first Japanese masters around Usui were military men who regarded as a question of honor that they should not be paid for helping others with Reiki, although it is not known whether Hayashi, who was also part of the Japanese military, charged for his Reiki sessions and training. He did suggest, as the practice expanded beyond its original small circle of the Imperial Navy, it might be appropriate to require payments, not only for material, but for spiritual reasons, as what is not paid for might not be fully appreciated. This became the standard position taught by Takata. Overall, it has served Reiki well as a phenomenon of one million persons cannot survive without organizational expenses or funds. On the other hand, wherever money circulates, there is a possibility of abuses and what some have called the commodification of Reiki spirituality. However, Reiki's phenomenal success never derived from organizational factors. On the contrary, Reiki is an example of what Stein calls the strength of weak ties. That is not a hierarch hierarchical organization and does not function as a religious movement 
or a church makes Reiki attractive to many who no longer trust institu institutional religion. In the 1950s, archaeologists found in China 12 jade pieces. They dated to the 6th century BC, describing basic techniques of working with qi or qi, and concluding with a warning, I quote, whoever follows this will live, whoever acts contrary to it will die, end of quote. The reference was through spiritual life, the most important gift of them all, which Reiki and other genuine schools teach how to mobilize qi, including wasting Cheng Chao's offering to our suffering humanity. Although all human stories also include shortcomings and imperfections, this is a gift for which we may all be grateful. Thank you.